live from Genghis Cohen in Hollywood, it's the Nighttime Show with your host Stephen Kramer Glickman. Tonight we have our head writer Matt Walker, I'm the voice of the Nighttime Show Mike Black, our very special guest Stephen Keaton on Family Ties, Burt Gummer in Tremors 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and coming soon 6, Michael Gross. And now, the stuntman for all the earthworms in all of those movies, Stephen <laughs> Kramer Glickman! Yeah! Great job. Whoa. Great job, Mike Black. Woo. We missed you. We missed you. I missed you guys. You got um, your job back. This is a uh, this is a wonderful treat for us. Uh, uh, Michael Gross is here. Michael, it's, a, it's such an an honor to have you here. And, it's uh, a pleasure to be here. Thank you. We're sitting in a Chinese restaurant. Here Michael. we are at Genghis Cohen's. <laughs> this is mm-hmm. Genghis Cohen's. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a it used to be I think a kosher Chinese restaurant. Now it's just a regular Chinese restaurant. <laughs> right. But it's still a very good. Uh, it's one of my favorite places. And uh, and so now and we're the name recording. Says it all. That's the great part about it. You know what you're in for. You know. It, what is, you're in it for. is a, it is a wonderful name, and this is this is my old neighborhood, and it was. Oh really? really? I just yeah, I love place on words anyway. So this, is, yeah. this is great. Did you live in this neighborhood when I, you were working at Paramount? Or? I uh, moved out to Los Angeles in 1982 to do Family Ties. I was wow. hired out of New York City. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And um, before uh, that, you were doing live theater on Broadway. Yes, almost. No? Exclusively. Really? Live theater, uh, on, or, on and off Broadway. I had done, let's say, a couple of television movies. Sure. One pilot that went nowhere. We're going to talk about those. Uh, and, um, <laughs> but by and large, my life was the theater in those days, and I am almost, almost to the exclusion of everything else. Cool. And uh, I loved it, and those were great days, but that was a long time ago now. So this is my first neighborhood, the Fairfax District of, uh, of Hollywood, my first uh, neighborhood for the first two years I lived in Los Angeles. I love it. Where did you grow up? I'm a Chicagoan. Really? Oh, wow. Chicagoan, so I'm mighty happy about them Cubs. <laughs> hey! Uh, yeah. You know, I, uh, after the, uh, uh, I love the city. I go back with a great deal of frequency. I have, uh, I have a sister there. I have cousins. I have... Uh, grammar school and high school friends with whom I still keep in touch, mm. and um, uh, when the uh, when the when the Cubs won last year, mm-hmm. like oh. a lot of people, I was ecstatic. You know, yeah. this is the thing that was never supposed to happen. You yeah. know, it was like yeah. the joke. And I I said, oh my god! I said, I wish I had a Cubby flag. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah, the uh, W concession outside every. Chicago Land Cemetery, oh. Oh, because yeah. you knew oh, people everyone. were yeah. going to be decorating their on. fathers and their oh, grandfathers' yeah. graves oh, with yeah. Cubs flags. Oh my God! Because the old man and the old man's old man had never seen the Cubs yeah. win, oh, and this was man. historic. And I thought, oh, I should have got a, <laughs> thousands <laughs> of Cubs <laughs> flags and sold them in front of the cemetery. <laughs> like cornered the uh, the uh, the cemetery market. Yeah, exactly. The impresario oh, of Cubs flags. Cubs flags for yeah, right. Graves, Cubs though. Flags for graves. Yeah. <laughs> Cubsflagsforgraves.com. It's, it's so check if it's registered. Street, there we go. It's just going to keep Cubs. getting bigger. Cubsflagsforgraves.com. You know, <laughs> I'm going to look it up. Uh, it's uh, see if it's Hold a on. thing, Matt. See if it's a thing. Because if it isn't, please register that and, and put. we'll make a little thing for Michael. Hey, you there. know what? Uh, register tasteful. Flags, for <laughs> flags, Cubs, Cubs flags. flags. Yeah, just make same URL. Just, no, you know. that's that's spoken like a true spoken like a true Irish. See, it's Catholic not registered. Too. The, oh, it's we not? can See? get it right now. We, we can, can get, get that it. Who would have guessed it wouldn't be registered? <laughs> right? right? Yeah. You know? I mean, come yeah, on. No. Well, grab it, grab it. <laughs> get it. No. Get it. We'll make millions. <laughs> we'll make tens of dollars. <laughs> yeah. I'm very familiar. I'm very familiar with. Uh, with uh, with cemeteries because my mother was Irish Catholic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, and uh, their idea of a good time on a Sunday is to go <laughs> to a cemetery, to all the gravestones and wash them. You know, we go <laughs> oh, with we go with soap and water and brushes and rags and that's what Irish Catholics do for fun. It's like mm-hmm. someday <laughs> I'm gonna be there right next to Grandpa there. Oh my God! You know, wash what, my stone. That's right. That's <laughs> did you I, have to? Did you go and do that when you were a kid? Did you see your? Parents I, I not only did that when I was a kid. Uh, last summer when I went back to visit, I was back in Chicago <laughs> and visited. I noticed my grand my grandfather's 
my grandmother's and my and my aunt's gravestones, headstones were all grown over. So mm-hmm. I I went and got some <laughs> clippers. <laughs> really? Yeah, I went. Yeah. This is what Irish wow. Catholics said. I went and got some clippers, and I took before and after. After pictures, I yeah. wish I wish this were television and I'd show them oh, to wow. you. Oh, that's amazing! Now, well, why do they charge so much for? They liked it. <laughs> you know, the yeah. mowers just don't do a good job. Yeah. What can I yeah, say? I was like, like, why do they charge so much if they're not going to do that for you? You I think can't. It's part of the rent. You can't get good cemetery help yeah, you anymore. Can't yeah. do it. Come Once on. Once upon a time, uh, there was a time where it was great. Half now. of them probably aren't even Catholic anymore yeah. in All yeah. Saints Cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That's amazing. So yeah, I went back and uh, and and trimmed them up a little bit. Do you have a? Uh, I just have sent those pictures neat, to them, neat to the them managers. Up. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right, 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 they go, right. "This is what it's supposed to look like." Yeah. I got just a. Compl- have you got a complaint box? <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> Cubs flags and hedge trimmers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cemeteries dot com. Yes. Yeah, yeah, full service. Let's make uh, the business. That's go. that's full what service. we do. We do. We say a few prayers. We tr- we. Trim and clean them and go home. And or if it's grown drink over, a beer. <laughs> sure, sure, of <laughs> Cut course. Cut see nice into the yeah. into the overgrowth. Get the did you have logo a, into it? Do you have yeah. brothers and sisters, or did you have? I have two sisters. Yeah. One who still lives in the in Chicago, right downtown, and uh, one sister. Oh, here's a plug for my sister Mary Gross, who for four years was on Saturday Night Live oh yeah. my God. in the Eddie Murphy days. Okay. I know who Mary Gross. Mary is, of Gross. Yeah. Uh, played, uh, Mary Alfalfa. played Alfalfa. She yeah. played Marilyn Monroe. She had some uh, yeah. among oh just a whole bunch of things. Uh, Doctor Ruth Westheimer. Oh, oh yeah, she was in a the, lot of fun the that was the when show. Joe Piscopo, Eddie Murphy, um, Julia Louis Dreyfus. Mm-hmm. Thank sure. you very much. They were yeah. all there together and. Uh, so that's my sister. We have two goofy people in the family. Wow. <laughs> yeah. What were your parents uh funny people at all or or uh were my, you... uh they were odd. Yeah. Yeah. How so? <laughs> how so? There how? you go. There you go. Well, um no my uh my my mother was uh a, a character. She was uh she was the person who would at any family party go into uh, somebody else's closet, come out dressed in silly clothes. And, <laughs> what? And, and, really? And, oh yeah, she was afraid of nothing. I was, of course, hiding. Like, right. why can't she be a normal mother? <laughs> hiding with my father, as a matter of fact. And, um, but she had a kind of fearlessness. She was a clown. She was, oh, uh, she was, wow. yeah, she was, she was the, the pratfall mom. She was not sophisticated humor. She was, um, she was soupy sales. A female sure. soupy sales, <laughs> yep. basically pies oh, in the yeah. face. That's, that was Ma. That, that's that's wonderful. That was Ma, and she was uh, she was a frustrated entertainer herself. The work never got done in the house because I could come <laughs> in at any given time into the kitchen and find Mom dancing with the mop to a to a song <laughs> on the radio. It's like Ma, it's nine o'clock and we have dinner. She was, yeah. you know, you know. So if there did was she a good, inspire those commercials? Like they had those ones where they had like Fred Astaire dancing with a well a vacuum cleaner or whatever was, it was. That was my ma. Yeah. That was my ma. God, so you know crazy. the work stopped. She if there was something be great, tombstones right now. <laughs> yeah, right, right. My my uh, my mom is uh, always reminds me that she's a dirtier comic than me. Like she, <laughs> oh, she really she is. just said to she me t- today, right be- as we were as I was sitting at the table, I was on the phone with her, and she said. Uh, uh, Stephen, don't forget. Uh, you know it's uh, you know the Passover is coming, so make sure to. That's your mom voice uh, now. I don't know what it is. How do I do my mom? Stephen, that's oh, your that's mom my voice. mom voice. Yeah. She goes, that's your mom. Stephen, it's been a weird voice day. <laughs> she goes, she was like, Stephen, uh, don't forget to clean out some uh, all the bread and everything that rises. Mm-hmm. Nothing that can rise because it's Passover coming up on Monday. So make sure you clean everything out. And I go. All right, no problem. She goes, oh yeah, nothing can that rises can be in the house. So, you know, when your girlfriend's around, right? <laughs> she said it, that. Yeah, she goes, when your girlfriend's around, keep it in your pants. And I was like, <laughs> mom, come on, mom, yeah. you're on speakerphone. Ooh. Yeah, please. <laughs> the priest is here, mom. Yeah, that's just you know. Ooh. Yeah, she. I think she'd be more upset if there was a priest there. She takes. Probably. Yeah, she takes no prisoners. Does she, she really doesn't. Yeah. She really doesn't. <laughs> uh, what about your dad? What was your dad like? My dad was the shy retiring type. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was. Uh, he was the. Um, uh, he was the Mort Saul to her. Um, <laughs> you know, to her Lucy Ricardo, uh, sure. Soupy Sales. He was a very dry, yeah. sense of humor, but a, a great sense of humor. I mean, That's just, a very Irish Catholic thing as well. <laughs> well, yeah, he yeah. was just very subdued and very. Uh, you know, he he had he had quick ones, but they were they was all verbal. His comedy, <laughs> and uh, but. Very, a very clever guy, very bright guy. 
and uh, it's not a day that goes by that I don't miss both of them. Oh mm-hmm. man! And uh, yeah, I yeah, totally they're just uh, they were they were they were good people. Yeah, no, you had nutty, uh, nutty. I mean, they, uh, they were both OCD. Mom was a a, 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 a hoarder in some ways. Yeah, and and and. Dad, every, there were so many little things that were ritualized in, in his life. And my wife goes, why are you doing that? I say, I come by it honestly. My father was this way, too. So, yeah, get off my case. So, with you... You've been flossing for 45 minutes. Oh, my God. Yes, but I'm going to die with these teeth. <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous, stuff like that. So, with your mom being a performer and your sister obviously getting into comedy... Uh, and you being out of Chicago, did you uh, work in Second City at all? Or my sister worked in Second oh, City. Okay. Uh, sister Mary uh, started out just taking some uh, some acting classes in college, and uh, one thing led to another. She winds up taking some improvisational uh, with his improvisational troupe, passing the hat in in mm-hmm. John Barleycorn's bar at <laughs> uh, seriously, that's the name of it in in Chicago. Wow! And next thing you know. She winds up at Second City and uh, got to know a lot of people there. And uh, she was there for some years. And it was actually, uh, she worked well with a whole bunch of people there. It was, it was John Belushi who recommended her wow. to SNL. Wow. And she didn't even have to audition. They said, she, B- Belushi said, she's crazy. She's nuts. She's wonderful. Take her. And they took her. Oh, my God. And she was for four years on uh, on SNL. Oh, my God. That's that incredible. was about, I'm going to guess, about 80 1980 to 1984 or something those years oh wow that's, a, that's so, amazing well that was an amazing time for theater in chicago too wasn't it, it was and i i left before theater became the hallmark it was oh, in chicago okay. I, I i i i went out east just about that time that some of the off loop theater yeah. was was forming well, Steppen- the steppenwolf Steppen- and things Wolf, like right. did not yeah. exist at the time sure were there actors that you knew uh f- from back home that were you doing were you doing any theater when you were you know i up? i i just in um just in college i was at the <laughs> university of illinois at chicago uh, frankly, we couldn't afford <laughs> ruined board downstate. Yeah, right. sure. Seriously, we couldn't. Couldn't, couldn't go to Champagne. Uh, yes, I used to go visit friends down there from time to time, but basically, I went to school on the subway and bus every day. That's nice. That wow. was. Uh, yeah, I lived at home with with the parents. Unfortunately, you know, we all got along, oh. and uh, so uh, I was not really a mem- except for the school. I wasn't really a member of the. You know, didn't do much outside of school, and then sure, went sure. immediately to uh, Yale Drama School. Wow! Oh, very nice. After oh, uh, after the University of Illinois, so went out there immediately after undergrad. So never became a part of the Chicago off loop theater movement. How was the yeah. Yale? How was Yale Drama School? My God, it was great. I mean, uh, it varies at any given time. You know, uh, faculties change and administrations change. It's generally speaking always been a good quality school. Uh, it was a three-year program, and um, uh, for a kid from the northwest side of Chicago, a basically working-class neighborhood, to even imagine going to an Ivy League school oh, yeah. was incredible. What a dream come oh, true. And I, I don't think I appreciate it as much as I – I mean, I, I did at some points. I thought, I can't – you know, it's, it pinch me, that kind of thing. Yeah, I don't think anyone really wraps their head around college when they're doing it. You know, like, yeah, you know, you're too busy. As appreciative as you should be yeah. about, you know. Yeah, yeah but I, I was back there last year again to visit some friends, and I just just to take the architectural tour of that campus is mm-hmm. extraordinary. You I, know? Can, I can only imagine. It's a yeah. beautiful, beautiful place to be, and um, a, a great opportunity, and like youth most youth is wasted on the young uh, that was wasted on me <laughs> yeah, no, I, I i was just working too hard to fully appreciate it. you know you're just putting one foot in front of the other but you i went to school a... with great people yeah um sigourney weaver was oh, a year wow. behind me oh my god uh so i knew sigourney there merrill streep was a year or two behind mm-hmm. me i forget uh, but we you know so we we knew each other back then sure and yeah. uh yeah. uh you know, it's, uh, some good people came through there. And a lot of great actors who never became as famous as Merrill or, sure. mm-hmm. you know, um, great actors who are just consistently working actors. Yeah. Yeah. I will see yeah. one of them uh, this coming weekend in a, in a local play. Oh, you know, I love people that. People who have That's never great. stopped working, yeah. they just never became household names. Is that play going to be running for a while or is it just... Uh, the play I'm seeing is a play at uh, A Noise Within. 
Okay. Uh, out in Pasadena, California, and it's Eugene O'Neill's Ah Wilderness. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that play. That's so great. Uh, I have a couple friends in that. One of whom was a classmate at Yale. Oh so, my god, oh, that's, that's awesome. amazing! That just keeps ticking along. Yeah, and you know that's the one thing that I think uh, you know we have a lot of young actors that listen to the show, and and uh, you know like students and stuff that are in college that listen to to podcasts and stuff like this. And I I think something that is important for them to know too is that training. Of like the reading and the training and the work, at the time it all just it becomes like your building blocks so that when you get out into the world and you're and you're doing movies and you're doing you know TV shows like it just it's part of who you are already. You that's know? Uh, that's a good point. Uh, or in today's Hollywood, you could just make a sex tape. <laughs> and then oh God! Get your reality show. So either but nobody <laughs> wants to see my sex tape. <laughs> I keep offering right, it. Michael, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure we can get a buyer. <laughs> With the internet, okay. Yeah. If you find, find that someone. your sex tape lacks pizzazz, uh, go, with, <laughs> go with theatrical training. Go with traditional training. You know? Right, exactly. <laughs> you know? What you need is a background in Shakespeare. Yeah. Yeah. Something to fall back on, basically. <laughs> no, uh, I, uh, I, I really do recommend that because people will um, – it, it, is, it is something to fall back on. And I'll tell you something, too. Uh, the last – you mentioned – uh, Mike, the announcer, was kind enough to mention Tremors in the intro. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. There have been a number of times when the, uh, I've talked with people at Universal who are producing the next Tremors, and they say we'd rather we'd rather look for talent where in the in the UK or some of these other places. And I go, well, you're gonna you, you're gonna ship them a long way anyway. Why the UK? They said the actors have better training. It's we true. can ask more of them because mm-hmm. they have, in general, mm-hmm. more tools in their kit, so to yeah. speak. Of in other words, you say, "Well, that's a slotted screwdriver. I need a Phillips. I got a Phillips. I got yeah. five <laughs> sizes of Phillips screwdriver." Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, that, that analogy is the same. Yeah. So, so you you may say, "Well, I I don't intend to do Shakespeare or Marlowe or uh, Webster or whatever restoration sure. comedy." Mm-hmm. Having play having done that you're you've just got more tools at your disposal Absolutely. that's all i'm saying so the, the experience will never do you wrong because Absolutely. it all it, it, whatever you're doing you're breaking down a character you're making choices you're making artistic choices as an actor and it will inform your work in some way and yeah. you know actors always think that they're auditioning f- when they're when you're auditioning for a series like you don't know what episode yeah. five is going to be. You don't know right. if if on episode you seven you rarely get to choose your roles as an you, actor. Yeah, you and you don't know like if them. they happen to need you to sing a song or if yeah. they need you to be able to do a scene from Romeo and Juliet or if you. And mm-hmm. It's like if you have those skills already in your toolbox, then when you get when you get the opportunity, you're able to to knock it out of the park. And that, right, that, I think that's that, I think that, that's really true. Works. That training will never do you wrong. And again, it's uh, I think it's. It's uh, it's helping you in the marketplace if you take pains to get great training, and that means, like the, I mean, how many English people do you see come over here, and they have amazing American Southern accents yeah. Yeah. or oh, other yeah. sort of. Oh, yeah. Well, we should be doing that with them. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, we sure. should we Absolutely. should have that same aptitude. In some cases, it's not taught. So um, you're 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 making yourself more marketable. Let's just put it that way. The more training you have, I think Michael just made a case for me never working in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? I can't do Would any voices. That? This is the only voice I can do. This is it. Well, you can do this and uh, and uh, Beavis from Beavis and Butthead. Well, or I you just, just look I just like look like Beavis. Beavis. <laughs> 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 that, the voice that might well. be it. Yeah. Hey, so uh, you know, I, I, uh, as always, you know, we always have Fireball Whiskey with us whenever we tape an mm-hmm. episode of our show. You know, we we had the Kaplan twins on. We yeah. gave them a bottle. We give bottles away a lot to people. You know, sometimes it's good stuff. We, people yeah, like it. It's, people yeah. love that stuff. Uh, I actually have a bottle with me right here, and uh, I'm I'm gonna drink some of it. Uh, but if you listen when I open the top of this bottle, you can hear in the bottle. You can hear. The fireball whiskey talking, and it's a. Uh, you can't awesome. hear fireball yes. oh, talking. Oh, you totally can. Hang on, All let right. me take the lid off. Ready? Hey, Oga, the man. <laughs> I could be the man. There he I'm is. I'm gonna be the man today. That's the We're sound. We're gonna that- have fun. <laughs> That's fireball. the sound of the fireball yeah. whiskey inside it's the It's like bottle. it's like encouraging you. It's- it does. Hey there, fireball whiskey. Hi, man. 
Hey, I'm so excited. I can't wait to drink you. Man, stick stick it. Get rid of all this small talk. Just drink me already so I can have some fun in your all tummy, right. bro. Get, get in my tummy. Get Woo! in my tummy. Well, make it happen. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh. Woo. How how is it down there? Oh my goodness, dude! It's so it's so cool down here. But like, dude, what the hell did you eat for lunch? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh um, my god! I it mean, smells like dog shit down here, bro. <laughs> oh my! Oh well, hopefully that fireball whiskey will make things smell just oh a little bit god. better in there. I can't. You know, I'm gonna have to hang out in your stomach for a while, and make it smell good. So uh, yeah, yeah, keep, try. Keep drinking that shit, bro. Yeah, I will. I'm gonna drink a little bit more. Here we go. Here we a little go. More. We're my friends. Yeah, we're having a party in Steven's drown stomach. Drown out, drown out these it's horrible awesome. choices I've made. Woo! Oh, fireball whiskey. You know, fireball. It makes you feel good, and it makes your stomach smell better. <laughs> All right, back to the show. Um, let's uh, let's talk about early credits. Early. Credits um, <laughs> on I, That's my new segment. segment. <laughs> Early credits brought, brought to you by, by Fireball Whiskey. Brought to you by Fireball Whiskey. Uh, this is a gift from Michael Gross. We brought you a yeah. bottle of Fireball Whiskey. It's Fireball. It's, it's, it's cinnamon. It's absolutely delicious. Uh, are you this is uh, serious? It's yes. yours. Yeah, it's right. yours. <laughs> it's absolutely uh, the most delicious whiskey. And if you drink it. Uh, for the young Irish Catholic boy. It's, it's magic. all you need for the weekend. I'm looking at the back of the label. and It's got a toll-free call, toll-free number on it. Yes, yeah. to, it really to does. what, com- complain when, you're, when, you, when you go blind? Yeah. Or, 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 or to brag. One right. of the two. Yeah, or, to <laughs> brag, or to brag about all the women a that you A fiery kick of red hot cinnamon. Woo. All right. It's, it's, it's tastes like solid. heaven, burns like hell. That's all it. Right. That's it, baby. Yeah. It's all you. That's yours. Let's do it. Um, where I'm, <laughs> I'm down. Ice I'm cream. In. I'm in. Oh, we'll go yeah. get you some ice. Oh I didn't my even god. Think about We've that. actually tried it on waffles. We did. Oh, we right. had it on waffles on the show oh, with Johnny Pemberton, right. yes. uh, and then we threw waffles at the audience. Why does that not surprise <laughs> me? It's just really a thing that happens, Michael. All right, let's talk. First credit on IMDb, which is uh, my favorite way of doing this, just because. Oh you yeah, know, because who this knows? Is something I probably lies. don't remember. It, uh, who knows what's on there? It wasn't a gory Halloween, was it? No, it's yeah. a it's a movie called A Girl Named Sooner. Oh, you're uh, right. That uh, goes way back. This is time. way Can back. Can I tell you how lucky I was? Can Please. I tell you how Please. lucky I've been? Please. I was working at the Actors Theater of Louisville. Yep. A great uh, resident company in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, I was one of their core resident company members of which oh, they had about, let's say maybe they had about six or eight or ten people who were there mm-hmm. pretty much all season. And... Um, for for nine months and uh during the spring of i think this was 74 uh i heard they were they were looking f- there was a 20th century fox uh television movie who was coming mm-hmm. being directed by delbert mann delbert mann oh i wish i could remember his credits now one of you get on google sure. quickly <laughs> uh and um he's he all over the place he's a great hollywood director anyway here here was the it was my very first film. I went and auditioned for this uh, film. They were going to be nearby in southern Indiana filming. Uh, Richard Crenna. Wow. Uh, Lee Remick. Uh, um, oh Don God. Murray. Oh, my God. Uh, Anne Francis. Cloris Leachman. Oh, my God. I got the role, played opposite Cloris Leachman. Uh, met uh, Miss Remick and... Um, uh, Dick Crenna and uh, Don Murray and Anne Francis, who were who've been in everything, oh, yeah. uh, great Hollywood stuff in the '40s and the '50s, and uh, and Delbert was the kindest uh, kindest gentleman in the world. Yeah, uh, he was a really incredible uh, a director and producer, but he uh, best known for his work as the director of Marty. Marty. Won his Oscar for exactly. That. Yep, that's exactly. It. He won the Oscar for that, yeah, right? Yep. Right. Huge, uh, huge. Yeah. Right. With Ernest Borgnine. Uh, the Borgnine. And um, but he just did a hell of a lot of Hollywood stuff back in the day and Delbert was a real gent and um, this <laughs> you're gonna laugh about this yeah. because I played what an undertaker we're back in the cemetery <laughs> again oh god again I played an undertaker who was uh, who was um, who was uh, it was back in the 1920s uh, moonshine mm-hmm. and uh, I was selling hooch to uh, to Cloris Leach <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I don't think I would, no she was selling me her stuff that's it and I was peddling it for her 
Okay. And okay. something like that. So I get to drive a 1935 Packard hearse. Nice. And uh, anyway, it was great. And oh, my that God. That was a television film. So you film. always had a side business as an entertainer. <laughs> yeah, <body>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. If it's not Cubs there flags, you go. It's, it's huge. You I got, missed my calling, all right? <laughs> uh, in 84, you got to do uh, a one of those fun beach movies, uh, oh, Summer stop. Fantasy. Stop. Summer uh, Fantasy. Uh, this is the name alone. Julian. Summer Fantasy. Who's in that? Uh, Julian uh, Phillips, uh, Ted Shackford. Uh, Ted Shackelford, yeah. Shackelford, sorry yeah. about that. Julianne yeah, yeah, Phillips, yeah. Yeah, oh, a real God. sweetheart. And yeah, we played, uh, you know, I forget. Uh, All sorts of fun. You want to hear the plot? I'll tell you the plot. Sure, go ahead. After graduating, <laughs> after graduating high school, Carrie needs something to do for the summer. She goes to lifeguard tryouts and gets the job. In the hot Los Angeles summer, she will fall desperately in love with a much older lifeguard. And the poster is like... It's one of those posters. Oh, it's that's like I'm a, loving it. Look this. at the summer fantasy, uh, guys. You gotta look it posters, up. Look it's it up like, on IMDb. Oh, that like was a, one of that was one of Ju- uh, uh, Julian Phillips' first uh, pieces of work, and uh, yeah, Ted Shackelford. That was God, I love yeah. That, that, that's stuff. when they were turning out a lot of movies of the week. Oh yeah, and I believe it was for NBC, and uh, I was newly minted as an NBC person mm-hmm. on Family Ties in 1984, and so they were always saying. Hey, here's a role for you. Want to do this? And it was oh, uh, summer work on the, uh, you know, uh, on the uh, when you were on hiatus from the series, and it was great. I did a slew of those. I love that. Now that's we great. have to talk about uh, before we get into Tremors one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> and of course now six. Yeah. We have to talk about Family Ties. Now, mm-hmm. uh, I told you when you came in, Mike. I don't know if you know the story, but I'll make this very short and very quick. Uh, I uh, I got to go with my grandmother to the Paramount uh, Studios when I was uh, eight years old, 1987, and uh, we went into the commissary, and we were sitting in the commissary uh, having lunch, and the the guy the uh, the old guy from Willow, the like the little uh, oh d- Billy Barty, Billy Barty mm-hmm. was sitting Very at the good. thank good. you buddy, he was sitting right. at a nearby table, and I was mm-hmm. like, oh my gosh, that's Billy Barty, that's and then I just stopped dead. I look straight across from us, and Michael Gross is sitting there having lunch with wow. an agent or a producer. And I was like, it's Michael Gross from Family Ties. And we were like, oh, I was losing my mind as a kid. I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. I what, can't believe what, he's here. What really attracted was the fact that I was blowing a cherry tomato out my nose. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, was, I was never very good at table. They could, yeah. they could dress me up, but they couldn't take me out. What? How did they let him in here? I, did, I don't this know. This is the good side of the that commissary. That commissary was so nice, too. It was yeah, very it was, pretty. It was yeah. this two-level two, le- two level place. And uh, weirdly enough, and I did not tell you this, but this is uh, so we ended up going to the set of Family Ties, and uh, and we and uh, and then we got to go and watch a little bit of like a rehearsal or a taping, mm-hmm. and there wasn't a lot of people sitting in the audience, so it wasn't during like a part where they had brought in. Did you guys have a live studio audience for the we show? We did have a live studio audience on uh, Friday nights. Okay, uh, so during the, during the rehearsal week, it was not uncommon for people who were on studio tours. To come in a few at a time, maybe sure. half a dozen, maybe eight or ten at the most. That sounds about right. And, and watch rehearsals. Yeah, so we got mm-hmm. we got to go in for uh, uh, day by day, which was a show with Louis uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. On the lot, also we got yes, to go to right. that. It was about a daycare center, I believe. So mm-hmm. yeah, it and was. then uh, and then we went to your set, and we got to watch your sh- you guys rehearse, and uh, and I'm sitting there, and uh, Teeny Yothers came up to me and uh, was like, "Oh, you're so cute. Look at you. You're adorable." And I was like, <laughs> "She was looking for a date. Oh, yeah, very sure. possible. <laughs> yeah, she liked younger men. <laughs> oh my god, you were eight at the time. I was right? eight. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and she was like, "Oh, you're so sweet." Now. Uh, she was like, maybe someday you'll be on the show. And I was like, I'm going to be on the show. And she was like, no, I'm saying that like someday maybe you could act on a show like this. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be on Family Ties. And she was like, that's not what I'm saying. And then I went home and told every single person at school, I'm going to be on Family Ties, everybody. Tina, you other said so. And, uh, and it was a, a huge deal for me. But aside from that, aside, this is the other weird part of that story, is that I'm sitting at the table with my whole family. And I have to tell this because there's no other time I'll be able to tell mm-hmm. the story. Right. I'm sitting at the table. Uh, Michael Gross sitting across from us, you know, having lunch. Uh, 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 Billy Barty over here. And my mom turns to me and she goes, go to get up and go to the bathroom right now. Get up and go to the bathroom right now. Go, go. And I go, why? She goes, trust me, go to the bathroom. And I go, all right. I get up. I walk into the bathroom. I'm eight. Okay. Yeah. 
I walk to the urinal, and I'm standing next to some guy who's at the next urinal. Mm -hmm. And I look up at the guy, and it's Eddie Murphy. Oh my god! Oh, and, for goodness' sake! And I go, I go, <gasps> and he go, <laughs> and I go, you're Eddie Murphy. And he goes, eh, eh, you know, does the, the laugh, right? <laughs> and then he goes, he goes, uh, he goes, don't pee on my shoes, kid, or whatever. <laughs> like said that to me, and uh, and I go, I'm such a big fan. I I love all, all of your movies. And he goes, uh. All right, well, f come back to my trailer, bring your family, and you guys can get some autographs. And he took our entire family, oh, of like oh nine God. of us, our entire family, back to his trailer, and he signed autographs <laughs> for every single one. When your grandmother tells you to go to the bathroom, yeah, go, you to, the go bathroom. to the bathroom. <laughs> yes. All right, Don't so argue with Granny. Tell me about Did your mom ever tell you what you had to do with Eddie Murphy to get him to do that for you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh part man. Of the she may, she may have made made some sex with I'm going to tell you. Had it been you, Cosby, it'd be a different story <laughs> altogether. Very different. God. Oh, Here, kid, guys. drink this. <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you a urinal story. Please. Ah, I've got tons of them. Yes! Uh, urinal story. No, when I, first went to, uh, when I first went to Paramount Studios, I was remember I was a theater guy. We, I was used to doing even the greatest Broadway, sh Broadway theaters were old, you know, and yeah. decrepit. And uh, plaster peeling off the dressing room <laughs> walls and all this sort of stuff. I mean, they, they were built a long time ago. So uh, theater was decidedly not as elegant as, as television and film. Yeah. So I get to, I get to Paramount and uh, uh, our dressing room area, there's a, there's a bathroom down the hall and I go into the, I go into the, the bathroom area and there's a urinal regular size urinal and there's one very close to the floor mm -hmm. or a, one of these lower ur urinals well yeah. i since learned that they had to do with the americans with disabilities because billy so, barty was there uh, billy sure. barty was there <laughs> yeah sure. people people shorter people mm -hmm. uh, people in wheelchairs can can use those urinals i didn't know that at the time i don't know why i'd missed it maybe because new york where i spent most of my time was largely un non-compliant with that <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, of course yeah. yeah right so um all i all i knew was on the next studio was uh, was uh, a taxi. Taxi was there, and I went, oh, my God, they have built a urinal for Danny DeVito. <laughs> I just assume when you, get to be, when you get to be a TV star, they will lower the urinal for you. You know, oh if you're Danny God. DeVito. Yeah, so yeah. I, that's how yeah. stupid I was, let's be honest. <laughs> sure. But all, Taxi was on the very next soundstage, and so there was... Danny DeVito and Judd Hirsch and um, <laughs> and uh, you know the great the great cast of Taxi and I thought oh that's power they yeah. built him a <laughs> urinal whoa oh my how, god that's amazing. how much did that tempt you when you were getting your contract for Family Ties <laughs> to have your own custom I, want, I want my urinal. I want my urinal raised <laughs> yeah, there we go I'm gonna get the Danny DeVito yeah uh, but I don't want it to raise during Passover <laughs> there hey. don't raise it don't raise it during Passover oh my lord all right so tell me how uh, Family Ties came to be for you how did um, this happen <laughs> all right I'll tell you. Um, yeah, I was very fortunate, extremely fortunate. I had uh, I had auditioned for maybe one or two other. I was in New York. Uh, this was 1984. I had auditioned. F I'd done one other pilot maybe a year before uh, that went nowhere. Pilot for NBC, uh, and um, I think it had great possibilities, but you know, didn't work out. Uh, I had auditioned for one other pirate. Pirate uh, pilot at the time, which was Saint Elsewhere. Do you remember oh, yeah. Saint Elsewhere? Great show. Oh my God! Of course. Yeah. yeah, I think it ran for about three seasons. Yeah, and Jerry, <laughs> we had Jerry Bur Jerry Burns was on. Yeah, yeah, yeah Jerry Burns was on the show. to a show ever. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful it, show. It put most of NBC inside that kid's head. Yeah, <laughs> it was like all that. All those shows were like Do you in his imagination. This, the, the finale of the show. I didn't know. So yeah, <laughs> at the end of the show, it's you find out that there's like a child who's been like sort of in a coma or there's something weird with him and he's like looking at this snow globe that has St. Elsewhere Hospital and he's been imagining the show his entire time except it had so many crossovers other oh. NBC shows with St. Elsewhere that that <laughs> therefore means that like that whole run of NBC shows were all inside this kid's mind oh I, if you I, have I didn't continuity. know that yeah. but that was a that was a wonderful show in its time and sure. very good show launched yeah. Howie Mandel Mm -hmm. the, I auditioned for that show uh, several times, mm -hmm. wow. and they liked what I did, but I'll be honest with you. they uh, I finally said, why didn't it work out to the casting director, who had been a good friend of mine? She said, Michael, your, your work was wonderful, but this guy... This was a character, a doctor who was always hitting on women. He was mm -hmm. going into the broom closet with nurses, da-da-da. He was all... He was the... He was... 
the womanizer. And yeah. he was always getting these women. And she said, Michael, I hate to tell you this. You're not a Lothari. They, <laughs> they honestly felt as if I wasn't good looking enough. Wow. Seriously. They said, you know, you, I, my looks are offbeat. Come on, let's face it. I'm not, you know, who what? I'll tell you the you. person who was cast in who that role. Who was cast? The person who was cast in that role was David Burney. Mm-hmm. And within in that same year, I wound up playing opposite David Burney's wife, Meredith Baxter Burney. Mm-hmm. Wow. wow. I was good enough for her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. No, so that same year, having oh failed God. to get what on. A bizarre Isn't that situation. weird? That having failed to get on Sane Elsewhere, the role I was looking for was by very handsome uh, David Burney. Uh, and I wound up being cast as David Bernie's wife's husband in mm-hmm. Family Ties. How do you like awesome. that? Awesome. Oh, that so bizarre. bizarre. That's weird bizarre. little thing. That kind that of happened so to you, Stephen. Yeah? When you got that breakdown that one time. Didn't you get one that said, like, it was like, we need, like, a fat loser, and they thought of you for the role? I forget exactly what it said on there. <laughs> uh, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> you got one that was, like, horrible. Oh, now it's just oh, called no, no. the Stephen Glickman type. <laughs> yeah, we're looking <laughs> for a the, Glickman, the type. Glickman type. <laughs> oh, I, I, no, I got, I got an audition for uh, the uh, for a uh, fat, ugly guy. That's what, that guy. was the that name, was, of the name of the character. Fat, fat ugly guy. guy. <laughs> and then I got there, and they go, they go, you're not uh, ugly enough. Yeah. I was like, well, thanks for yeah. that. <laughs> Somehow that's... But I need the job. Yeah. I can play ugly. Yeah, yeah, I can play ugly. Let me play ugly. <laughs> you remember those MSN butterfly commercials where it was like yeah. guys dressed up like the mm-hmm. butterfly? Sure. I got sent a breakdown from my commercial agent saying uh, they need a fat, lazy butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I can do that. And so I show up. And I guess they got their wires crossed, but they were like, uh, so, Michael, we have you here for the construction work? I was like, no, I'm a fat, lazy butterfly. <laughs> they were like, no, we have you down as construction. I was like, look, call whoever you need to call. I know me, and I know this <laughs> type of commercial. I'm the, I'm the before most of the time. I'm a fat, lazy butterfly, so why don't you just go get my wings and let's do this? Yeah. And they, they were like, no, we have you for a construction worker. And Hilarious. The, the MSN people came out and we were like, no, we really <laughs> want you for the construction worker. I was like, all right, but I'm telling you. All right. I'm a lazy butterfly. I'm a lazy. Now, did, you, did you get it? And I did you wind it. up playing the construction worker with wings? No, I got nothing. I was just curious. You nothing should get a business card that. made that just says Mike Black, fat, lazy what's butterfly. You, what's that construction <laughs> worker doing with wings? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's so weird. I did, however, get the uh, Imposter Roadrunner a year later oh, for wow. Roadrunner uh, mm-hmm. Hi Fi, where High they just had it. me dress yeah. in like homemade gear to look like the Warner Brothers Roadrunner. Right, right. And you're very ridiculous handsome. costume. But I got to wear rocket skates for that. So that oh, was awesome. Oh, my God. <laughs> did you break anything? Like, I feel if I wore rocket skates, I would fall down and break my ankle. <laughs> These were not wrist. actually functional rocket oh, skates. Oh, okay. They shot sparks out of the back, and they did have to put, like, flame retardant gel on my legs. <laughs> and anytime someone's doing that, you're giving them a lot of trust. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> like, I noticed when you came in today, you're still wearing the flame retardant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is that just it was a safety habit? Post traumatic, post traumatic yeah. commercial syndrome. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mike right. lives a dangerous lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're gonna do first impressions on okay. on cast. Uh, Justine Bateman, first impression. Just uh, a, a, a adorably beautiful, and yeah. I'm gonna tell you, and and one and. No, that that's not fair. Smart, yeah. Smart. That's probably the first impression. But I mean, but you can't get past the very first impression, which is she was gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. she had a beautiful face, and she was the, she was definitely the heartthrob of the series for for young men. Mm-hmm. And I'll oh, tell yeah. you, oh, uh, yes, we all concur. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she uh, and she's 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 wonderful. And I'll tell you a, a, a stupid. You know, people are always asking for stupid uh, stupid backstage stories. Please. Sure. And um, we're lucky we didn't pull this on you, that you, you weren't traumatized, because frequently when people came into the Family Ties uh, studio to w- watching us rehearse, Justine and I would go into a little act sometimes. <laughs> and uh, because we were this sweet and wonderful family on television, we'd purposely do the sick twisted version of <laughs> Oh of my that. god. Are you saying and that you, natu- you did the aristocrats is na- what you're saying? <laughs> naturally naturally yeah, I, I this was my instigation but Jesse and I would set this up there would be people watching coming through on a tour and we'd do some thing and she'd make some comment and I'd say Justine come on don't please you know that that's <laughs> stupid don't bu- you know you I, I I'm taking you to task for that and she'd say no don't and I'd say 
you are not too old for a bare bottom spanking. <laughs> oh, and she'd my say, God. Daddy, no. <laughs> Daddy, no. And I said, You're not too old for a bubble bath. And she'd say, Oh, my Please, God. Da-. And this is like Stephen Keaton and Mallory. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, so we're doing this. I say, And I'd say, She'd say, No, Daddy, not the bubble bath. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> so, God. I mean, this oh was so man. bad. Oh, my God. We, People must have lost we would, their minds. Well, I think some of them are still having PTSD. Oh because, God. I mean, you know, it's the sort of thing that Cosby did for real. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, oh, we, my God. We were being stupid and just pulling a bun- pulling pranks in front of the idle viewer. But, uh, Imagine, yeah, it was, like, if... If, if TMZ was in the internet yeah. age, yeah. Like no, the no, alerts. oh no, oh, oh yeah, oh, sorry, no. sorry, yeah, yeah right, oh, no, but God. I mean it was. Uh, Justy and I would just do these stupid pranks on people. Say, <laughs> no, Daddy, I say, I'm, and, and then I would lead her off stage, and I go. Ow! Oh, Daddy! Daddy! <laughs> you know, I mean, it was... Just, oh, my just, God! And, every, every, and Meredith would roll her eyes and go, there they go again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That is my favorite thing I've that's ever heard. That's ridiculous, but that's what we did. you got to have some fun. Oh. Some oh, silly, yeah. stupid fun. No, Justine, by the way, I think she... I mean, she was not a kid at that point. I think she was 19 or something when yeah. the show ended. But yeah, yeah. so, I mean, but those are the sort of stupid pranks we were playing. I love it. I love it so much. What about uh, awesome. what about Tina Yothers? Can we talk Tina about Yothers. Uh, Tina Yothers was just an absolute dear. She was a person who had had very little experience before then and uh, a commercial too, but just as 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 cute as as ever. She's now a mother of two, soccer mom herself, and a very dedicated mother. Um, she and I used to get into a lot of trouble together because um, we were fond of playing last tag or last touch or whatever you call it. You know, mm-hmm. the person who touches yeah. oh, the yeah. one last is the yeah. one who wins. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, so before we'd go home for the day, the idea was to play last tag, and we'd, we'd, we'd <laughs> run around the sets and run around, you know, and, and crash into walls and oh, yeah. in an effort to evade each other, and people would have to yell at us. And, and it was like, my favorite was before hiatuses, uh, before we go on hiatus for months, mm-hmm. uh, several times I tagged her last. And so she she was the loser for the entire hiatus. Until <laughs> yes! we got back for the next yeah. season, Amazing. I carried, you know, I carried Just the winner. Just strategizing that whole Yeah, yeah. I was like, to- I've got to touch her last before we go home for the season. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. So stupid things like that. You know, so Tina... She still resents me for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, what about Meredith? Uh, did you guys meet before? Uh, no, I didn't even know who she was. Being, and you guys are doing a, a play together. We are doing, a, Meredith and I are doing a play together in August at the Totem Pole Playhouse oh, cool. in in Pennsylvania. Uh, this is a, a summer stock theater, and we are doing a production of A.R. Gurney's Love Letters. We've done this before. And we're doing it in oh August. That's the Totem Pole Playhouse in Pennsylvania, August. Sometimes yes. I forget yeah, the exact dates. But <laughs> Meredith and I are still great friends. We uh, we keep in touch with some regularity. We have done a couple television movies together. Believe it or not, they cast us as husband and wife. Where do they get what? that Where stuff? Where do they get these ideas? Get the are they sure you two match up well on even, camera? Even more yeah. bizarrely, the last two times we played together as husband and wife, they've been both times Get this, Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus. So we can be found in we can be found around Christmas time on the Hallmark Channel or the Lifetime Channel playing Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus. I love it. So love uh, yeah, we had we did that a couple years ago. Uh, was our last time we worked together, and so they came to us and said, uh, "Would you like to do this play together?" It's like any excuse to hang out for a, a couple weeks. We will adore it. Yeah. yeah. So Meredith, awesome. Meredith. Uh, I mean, naturally, she was she was ador- She's bright. She's funny. You know, a number of years ago, she came out of the closet. I knew that. Oh, wow. um, uh, I knew that a number of years ago, uh, before it was public. People will frequently ask me, um, uh, "Did you know Meredith was gay when you were working on the show?" And I said, "Well." Quite frankly, Meredith didn't know she was gay yeah. when we were doing yeah. the show. She was married to David Burney. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The divorce took place in the course of that show. The extremely handsome David Burney. Extremely yeah. handsome David <laughs> Burney. He took a role from me once upon a time. <laughs> but I got his wife. Yeah, I got yeah, him you back. got his wife. At any rate, um, uh, so she didn't know she was gay. That's how long That's how long I've been in this business. <laughs> I knew Meredith Baxter when she was straight. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so... Um, 
No, Meredith was. Um, uh, oh my God. She was she was as good a heterosexual as you could find in those days. She had been married, <laughs> she had been married three or four oh times, and I said, Meredith, if you go to get married again, call me so I can stop you. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. obviously picking the wrong men. This is not working out. Yeah. Years later, she came to me and she said, I've come out of the closet. And I said, it's not as if you haven't given heterosexuality a try. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she gave it her best shot. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, anyway, she's wonderful. She's with a partner, Nancy. I attended mm-hmm. their wedding on a couple of years ago she and nancy are going great That's guns great. and i expect to see nancy there at the totem pole playhouse she may come mm-hmm. out and visit meredith when i'm when we're there and awesome. anyway i love her to death she's I love it. she's great men will often tell me ah i had the hots for her i just and i said look but she's gay and i, and I go wait a minute if you spend five minutes with her she's still as lovely as mm-hmm. smart and as funny and yeah. as clever you would still fall in love with her i don't yeah. care that wouldn't stop you you'd be the one to say i'll bet i can better get her to be heterosexual again. Oh, yeah. You know, because you would just fall in love with her. I mean, what yeah. what difference does that make? You know, so she's yeah. still, I, I love Your her to death. We're still good friends. with her probably wouldn't have changed that much. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right. Yeah. Guy can I, can I tell you, you, you wouldn't have had a chance back in the old days, buddy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, what about Michael? What about Michael J. Fox? Michael Fox is still going great. I mean, what a wonderful spirit. What was he like when he you is. met him? Like, what was he? Uh, was like Michael him? was a... a just a wonderfully talented, inspired, but two feet on the ground kid from Burnaby, British Columbia, which is suburban Vancouver. Yeah. His father was a constable there, uh, a cop, basically. Oh, my God, yeah. Uh, a blue-collar family. Uh, Michael had done a couple things in Canada. Uh, you know, nothing to, nothing to remember, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and family ties found him. And uh, and was just, you know, made him and he yeah. helped make us, frankly, you know, yeah. he just had something special. Alex was the Fonzie of the 80s, the Alex yeah. P. Keaton God, character. Was he ever. Michael was always very uh, humble, very, very wonderful, uh, generous guy, uh, just a lot of fun to be around. And uh, I don't see him as regularly as I used to, because among other things, he he lives the center of his life is 3,000 miles away sure. in New York course, City. Yeah. Uh, the center of my life is still in Los Angeles where I met and married a wife and have ch- you know children, grandchildren now. Yeah. So when I'm in New York, I try to look him up. My wife and I, I think the last time we saw him was November of last year when we were in New York to see some other friends. I haven't been in New York since November of 2016, and uh, he was doing quite well. We met for breakfast, and... Uh, Michael was, as is often, I, I, you're going to ask me the same thing people are doing because he's had such, so much to do with the Michael J. Fox F- Parkinson's Foundation sure, and sure, sure. so yeah. much a spokesperson for that, uh, that particular disease. People will say, how's Michael doing? How's Michael doing? Oh, so no. I go to Michael and say, yeah. Michael, what do I tell them? Because it's one of the most frequent yeah. questions. He says, tell them I'm doing fine, which is, of course, part of. Michael's spirit. He's right, always yeah. doing fine because for him the glass is always half full. Half full. And uh, in fact, he was doing marvelously well the last time I saw him because he was on some new medication, which he said was really stabilizing him oh, marvelously great. well. He that's wonderful. Came on his own, uh, walked over uh, to yeah. uh, the, the restaurant where we commonly meet for breakfast, and uh, uh, he was just he was looking great. Well, and was, so he my was wife, on Howard Stern about three or four years ago and he, he gave this answer that I really loved in an interview because Howard asked him he's like having Parkinson's like do you feel that that limits your possibilities in acting now and he's like no I can still play anything I, want. I can play an astronaut I can play a race car driver as long as they have Parkinson's I can play that <laughs> <guy>. <laughs> hilarious right right yeah. right now well, like, that just sort of seems like his attitude where he's like I'll do anything just let yeah. me do it Michael is is he's he's never forgotten his origins he's never forgotten who he who he is where he comes from and which is a which is a very solid place uh, his mother's still alive lives in Vancouver he says I try to buy her a bigger house he's like no Michael like this is fine you know she's like in the in the old neighborhood and yeah and he I'll tell you one other thing he's got a he's got a sister who's one of the uh, great treasures of of Canadian theater wow. um and uh, yeah, uh, and uh, he's uh, she's a, she's a wonderful uh, uh, she's a wonderful actress who works a lot in uh, in uh, the Shakespeare Festival in uh, in uh, uh, in uh, Ontario and uh, 
the Great Lake Shakespeare Festival, and all. she's she's anyway. Kelly Fox is her name, and she's a wonderful wonderful uh, stage actress. Well, mm-hmm. something that uh, I I noticed about the show. I mean, you did 171 episodes of that wow, show. Wow, was it that many? I remember. That's yeah, a, okay, it's a lot. It's yeah. a lot of episodes. Uh, like over the time of doing that many episodes, the how how does the I mean. How did how did you feel the network handled you guys? Did you guys did you feel personally like you were well taken care of by them? Did you feel like uh, I, that's always something that I feel like when you've been on a series when you were on a series for such a long time, then they added a character like uh, later in the show they brought in the, well they brought in uh, they brought in a, a, a boyfriend a little, for they brought in a, ch- a child a they brought child. in Brian Bonzel Brian Bonzel yeah. right. right and, and they, they brought, brought in, in Mark, uh, Price. Mark Price Mark Price who was Skippy who was yep. mm-hmm. who was there for a great many years uh, but these were people who really augmented the family and brought out the best in the family um, uh First of all, we I think we were treated very well. Okay, uh, there was a lot of trust in those days by the network. Um, uh, Grant Tinker was was one of the one of the main guys there. He just passed away this last year. He was yeah. he was a marvelous guy, um, and um, uh, he um, they trusted they trusted Gary David Goldberg, who was the executive producer. Uh, Gary David Goldberg went back a number of years uh, with uh, people like Grant Tinker, and um, and they basically kept their hands off. They weren't as uh, as hands on manipulative. It's like you got to do this, and you got to do that. And what about this? And I remember one. T- here's a classic story about Der- Gary David Goldberg. Unfortunately, the late Gary David Goldberg, sure, sure. who passed away about five years ago. Uh, Gary, somebody called and said they want to. Uh, there's somebody on the net. There's somebody in the network saying it was a marvel. Uh, calling you on the phone. You want to take this call? It's, they see. No, I don't want to talk to anybody from the network. They said, but they're telling you how great the show was last night and how much they loved it and how high the numbers were. He said, if I take this call today, telling me how great the show was and how high the number was, next week I'm going to have to take the call about how bad the show was <laughs> right. and how low the numbers were. <laughs> and he says, I'm not taking either call. Wow. And that's smart. and they ultimately God, they let so him do that. And they and the network basically let him have a great deal of autonomy. They trusted him. They trusted where the show was. I don't know where you necessarily find that anymore, but it was a yeah. great thing to have in those yeah. days. And Gary said, "You keep your distance. I will produce a great show. Just don't hock me. You know, don't yeah. come after me all the time with yeah. with with little tweaks. Let me do it. We'll figure it out. Well, you've got a hit show. Leave us alone." Uh, it's so and genius. they did, and they did. It was wonderful. You know what's so crazy is uh, uh, still to this day. When I, well, when I was a kid, my my uh, family, my mom sat me down and she was like, uh, uh, you know, you know, you shouldn't drink. Drinking is really dangerous. You being out. I, I want you to watch an episode of this show. It's going to be on tonight. I read it in the TV guide, and it's all about drinking and being abusive with uh, drinking and drugs. And it was the, the Tom, Tom Hanks, Hanks episode. Oh yeah, of family. Ties yeah. and I, and it locked into my brain for the rest of my life. Like I was like, "Wow! Like this is what happens when Th- you." That's how I learned that uh, extract has alcohol in it. Really? Yeah. Like from that episode because he drinks. He was like drinking a vanilla, vanilla extract, extract. Yeah. and I was like, God. "Oh, that has booze in it." I didn't know. And that's- yeah, that alcohol <laughs> and um, yeah, that. I mean, they had a way of making it funny. You know, the yeah, guy, yeah, the guy sure. going into the uh, going into the spice cabinet to get the vanilla extract. Oh, right. <laughs> you know, they Crazy. keep keeping it funny, but dealing with some serious, serious things. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people to this day will say. Um, I learned how to be a father on Family Ties. Yeah. I learned how families can stay together under difficult times in family ties. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, yeah. it was extraordinary for its time. And who knew we were going to be part of television history? That having been said, I'll mention one other thing. When we stepped on the, uh, when we stepped on the Paramount Studios lot in 1982, I had no idea it was almost the golden age of, of the end of the sitcom mm-hmm. because uh, Taxi was there. Yeah. Uh, Happy Days was there. Joni Loves Chachi oh, wow. Wow. was was there. Um, uh, Laverne and Shirley mm-hmm. was there. Uh, I mean, these, are, these we shared the lot with these people. And oh, I remember, yeah. um, you know, uh, asking advice of Henry Winkler, who was just you know a couple a couple so. doors away in a dressing room. How do you deal with all this? I'd actually known Henry because he was a year or two ahead of me 
at the Yale School of Drama. Amazing. Right? The Fonz, right? So I had met, I had known him at Yale, and uh, but I re-met him on the Paramount lot years later. I said, Henry, how do you deal with, I mean, you know, you, you can't, where do you go? How do you, you know, he, he gave me some, you know, he was just wonderful saying, how do you, how do you deal with going anywhere? You know, it's a lot. He was, yeah. Anyway, Henry's a sweetheart. And, uh, you know, you just, how do you do this thing? God. And I mean, they used family ties too, to launch a ton of other shows. Like there are Mm -hmm. so many shows that came after and that were, you know, they, did you like, did you kind of notice that, that they would just kind of, they'd go, all right, now we're going to do growing pains. Now we're going to do step by step. Right. Now we're gonna, right. And then, right. you know, but not, not all of them were great. None and of them and were, times have changed. There's a, there's a modern yeah. family now, which shows modern American families and yeah. families. Yeah. I think families were always, there were always some families who were non-traditional, but we didn't see them on television. Sure. Right. And that's the beauty of, beauty of I, I think that's why television for many people is f- still a far more intimate medium oh, than yeah. is major motion pictures. Absolutely. Because they're in your home and they're living very much like you. You yeah. know, uh, there uh, there's an intimacy about television that's mm-hmm. it's hard to beat. Well, we got it. We got to jump to because uh, we're running. Uh, we're coming down to the end, but we have to talk about Tremors, one of the coolest. It's so damn cool. One of the coolest movies ever. And you've done uh, now six of them. And the sixth one is coming out uh, soon. Burt Gummer. Burt Gummer is the Burt. gift that just keeps giving. <laughs> God, isn't yeah. it, man? Yeah. No, it's been it's, it's been a lot of fun. And um, Did you think that in the first one? Nobody the, thinks. No, I didn't think in family t- for the pilot of Family Ties that yeah. this was going to go anywhere. You, you, <laughs> as an actor, you learn to simply be. I think the word is despondent. <laughs> you, know? yeah. you say this is not going anywhere, yeah. but yeah. I've got a job today. Thank huh. God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And but you never think it's it's you, then and it's it's luck and fickle fate and all these sorts of other things that take over. Um, uh, Tremors was just a lot of fun. What what was most meaningful for me was I was on Tremors, uh, the set of Tremors within days of our wrap party of the final season of Family Ties. Oh, God. And so for me, it answered the question, would there be life after Family Ties? Mm-hmm. Yes, and in a very different sort of character, thank God, because I was the sweet... I always call myself... I mean, Cosby at that time was the most famous sure. f- father in America. Right. We were usually running second, so I would say, well, I was the most famous Caucasian father in America. <laughs> sure, yeah. America's favorite yeah. Caucasian father. <laughs> at any rate, uh, but it proved that I could... Uh, and a classic liberal, and so to play this paranoid survivalist <laughs> yeah. gun-toting Burt Gummer with it. a real edge uh, a chip on his shoulder about the government and life yeah. and uh, people treating him unfairly <laughs> oh and God. the Armageddon to come you know uh, Stephen Keaton was all the glasses half full with Burt the glasses half empty <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The glass is broken yeah right yeah. right right well the glass is full but it's cyanide <laughs> yeah. you know right yeah. right, right. Exactly. something you can't drink <laughs> right 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 <laughs> it's I poison I love that and I love that he turns out to be kind of right uh, yeah, about, right, you know, right, like, right, right. Yeah, he was man. preparing for disaster and disaster life, shows up Life is dangerous, <laughs> right. So uh, 27 years later, we just made uh, the fifth sequel to Tremors, which will be out, I'm not sure exactly when. It's in the editing room now. I, fin- I was finished in South Africa filming this about uh, about a month ago. One other thing I should talk about is um, actually there's something to be released uh, this uh, the 18th of uh, April Yes, on uh, uh yeah, video on demand video and on demand eight, and video HD. It's something called Last Call at Murray's. Yep, this, this is an is, independent oh, cool. film I've oh, done. And this this looks awesome. This looks like a like a total like it was a total blast. It, it's to a make. comic romance uh, bit of craziness with a wonderful ensemble cast. Uh, uh, wonderful uh, wonderful people uh, in this piece, and um, I um, I have it pulled up right now. Oh, this, do you? Yep. This uh, this is so fun! Oh my god, so, this is a huge this is a huge cast. Well, it's a it's a huge cast, and it's a bunch of people who get marooned uh, in a bar, Murray's Bar, on the last night of its operation, mm-hmm. uh, in a snowstorm. And it's one of these out of the way places where this is the this is the only business in town that's where still open. Where did you go to? Where did you go to shoot this? We actually shot this uh, out in the valley somewhere. So this was shot in. It, it's all basically all interior. Uh, not uh, with the exception of a few little places interior in a, in a bar, and um, so it's a great uh, just just a wonderful cast. Um, 
and uh, it's just a lot of fun because it's about it's about romance in a lot of ways. Hold for one second. I'm I, my phone is not pulling it up, and I need to be able to see the cast. Will you pull it up, buddy? I'm so sorry. I tried. I'm I'm trying to click How on it, and dare it's you, I know. Stephen. You try to run a professional podcast. We really do. Shows up. Your phone looks like it's been through a hockey. That's match it. I'm out of here. <laughs> oh my god! Is there a... Press the delete button. Yeah. It's... Um. This is coming to an end. This phone. Jeez, come on. So while they're scrambling through that, yes. um, I vividly remember seeing the first tremor in theaters. Yeah. And uh, the applause that happened when mm-hmm. you revealed the elephant gun. Yeah, <laughs> you remember there that. There was a vivid, loud applause when you revealed that, that that's yeah. what you were pulling out. Uh, what was it like seeing that thing for the first time? Uh, I'm going to tell you, it was such, such fun. <laughs> uh, because I, I went to see it. Uh, John Savage, by the way, is in Last Call. We will mention that. John Savage of uh, The Deer Hunter, uh, The Onion mm-hmm. Field. John, uh, I, I, you know, was the problem with that Universal Studios never quite knew how to market, market that thing. The film, they right. marketed it as a straight horror film, which yeah. people didn't get. It was like Naked Gun is not. It was closer in, ter- in tone to like RoboCop, where it was kind of like a tongue in cheek, a little yeah. bit of a yeah. parody. It's a and but um, still pretty legit. Yeah, and, right. As far as the these action. monsters could really kill you, there was real danger there, but it was quirky. Yeah, and um, so a lot of people didn't see it first run. It really found its uh, its audience in the in the after after aftermarket videos. Yeah, and um, but if you want to continue, we're good anytime. Go ahead. Um, okay. Here we go. All right, so we we have to so we have to talk about this movie. Last call at Murray's. This looks like such a fun piece of work, man. And uh and what a blast. I mean, uh Linda Palmer, such a such a terrific director and really uh that, of what I've heard, really fun to work with. How how was she for you? Well, she was wonderful. She's one of the reasons I I uh, I I uh, I did this piece because um I'd worked with Linda on a much heralded short film which went to a lot of festivals it was a 20 minute film about a man with dementia i played this 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 role sure uh something called our father and um and it was a big it was just an exceptional piece that she had written uh a very personal piece to her and uh i wanted to play this role because uh i had lived with someone who was who had dementia for 10 years i was a caregiver to my mother-in-law for 10 years who lived in our home and so this was a very personal thing for me it was a great piece and when she came along with murray's this was truly a labor of love it was a great sort of hard bitten character uh uh murray the guy who owns the bar and i said yeah i'd love to I'd love to play this, and uh, yeah, it a looks cast like... of fourteen, including John Savage, oh, who some I love of you may John know from Savage. the Deer Hunter and oh, the Onion Field, among other things. Yeah, and uh, lots of great, lots of great actors. I'm seeing uh, Lars Slind is in there, and uh, uh, Rachel Gage, Shauna Malcolm, uh, lots of really yeah, fun. Yeah, Joe yeah. Hart, this Eileen is... Gruba is a name you're going to hear more about. She's a wonderful actress. Jerry Kernian, Alina Madison, wonderful people. Uh, Paula yeah. Jai Parker. Uh, some some great people in there and um, such a good time. So it, it's uh, it's an ensemble piece where everybody has their moment. That's why they've attracted such a great cast because every character has its has its place in this piece. Every every character gets some attention and gets their moment. So yeah. that's really really and cool. that'll be available uh, on video, de- on demand. video on demand. Video on demand. April eighteenth, I think. Yeah, and, and on iTunes and, and, and thereafter. Oh, people will be grabbing it. Last that's- call at Murray's. That is so cool. Um, do, so, do you want to do um, mo- like? Are you interested in doing more movies, uh, more Tremors movies? I is w- that is that something that's a if possibility? It's, if the if the fans demand it, sure, that'd be lovely. Uh, because I fell in love with that character. Mm-hmm. He is uh, a great comic, paranoid. Uh, Obsessive compulsive disordered character. Yeah, a little like myself. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, you're right. So uh, you know, what's easier than playing me, right? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> so uh, 
No, it's just he he's so wonderfully over the top. And and uh, and people say, what do you think? What's the funniest thing about him? And I say, the fact that he has no sense of humor is yeah. one of the yeah. funniest <laughs> things about him. Yeah. God, Everything is best. deadly serious, <laughs> and um, and he's he's just a comic marvel. So uh, uh, I would keep doing that as long as they they want me to do it. All right. Well, before we wrap this up, I've got uh, a little thing that Mike, would you sing it? I think you could sing it, Mike, because you're very good at stuff like this. Uh, This is a thing that we like to call deep cuts. You do a little deep cut song. What am I singing? Just (laughs) sing something and call it deep cuts. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Deep cuts. Deep cuts. We've got some deep cuts and we have to ask you deep cuts. It's very you deep can do better cutting. than that. You can do better I than that. I didn't know I was doing anything. Here we go. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. Ready? <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Deep, deep cuts. Deep cuts. We're getting We're really ask deep you questions and deep, deep, about deep, deep cuts. cutting very deeply. Go. You were in a movie called Cool as Ice. Stop I it. Believe. Yes, you were with Vanilla Ice. Yes. You better tell me something about being in that movie. <laughs> another okay, another I mean, cult I movie. Can throw, look, I, not. Can, we, I can say something like, oh, Michael, you were on Curb Your Enthusiasm. You got to work with Larry David. How was it? How was yeah, we could have mentioned Parks and Recreation. I had a nice thing about the elephant gun going. Yeah. And instead, all starts, you want to no. hear about it. Vanilla Ice. Everybody wants to know. I want to know. Everybody wants. To. I did not sleep with him. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's get that. That's an ugly rumor that's been going around for years. I did not shave that curve in the side of his head. Oh man. <laughs> no. Uh, he was a one. He was a wonderful guy. I was. I was looking to do features. I was. Sure. Look, you know, looking to do features. Somebody said, "Here's this. Here's this thing. Yeah. Give it a try." Playing the father. I have. I don't think, I don't know that I've seen it. I may have seen it. <laughs> and that's not because of that particular film. It's because I don't like watching a lot of what I do. Because I've wanted to picking it to death and go, mm-hmm. Michael, why did you make that choice? Really? What's the point? I've probably seen Tremors 1 twice since it was out. Really? Twice in 25 years. And that's only to, when, when another sequel comes along, they'll say, what were you wearing in that first one? I go, well, l- let me look at my costume. And so I'll mm. go back and run, run the clips sure. of, of tri- yeah. put it in DVD and say, oh, yeah, yeah, I was wearing that thing on my belt, and I had a knife here, and I had a keychain that unwinds, and you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, it, but I don't usually, I feel like, been there, done that, and what can I learn from it? Yeah, I mean, look, you're a TV and film legend. You're a legendary That's, actor. That is well, not a... You are a, a legendary... of a stretch. Hey, to me, all you're right, a legendary well, actor, you, all right? I it's felt the same way since 1987, okay? And this man has watched Eddie Murphy urinate. I yeah. have <laughs> seen Eddie Murphy <laughs> urinate. I know what I'm talking He's about. He's seen it all. <laughs> yeah, but you uh, you have worked for long, long periods of time. I've been fortunate on, to work on, on a variety uh, in, of things, yeah. But, like, if you have a system, don't mess with it. Like, if you don't, if you don't yeah. feel like you have to go back and watch yourself to do to do your stuff to know what you do then you know there there's things i could learn that you know it's like oh that could you could improve that i mean there's always something to learn it's just there's a part of me that's not interested in watching stuff i've done give you yeah. give you just a very quick example of course um, or not going back a number of years ago i was doing a uh, well i was my broadway debut well this is a crazy show crazy idea but my broadway debut was in a uh a play called Bent, and this was in 1979. I, I know that play. You know Bent. Yes, okay. I do. Uh, and uh, I, I, I was in this show for exactly two weeks after it opened. And, and, and people said, How did, what kind of a Broadway contract is that? And I said, I had wanted to do something else off-Broadway with a director I loved, a man by the name of Joseph Chaikin, who was a... Uh, 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 incredible director in the off-Broadway world uh, and uh, in the alternative theater world. Mm -hmm. He's since passed away. I wanted to do this production with him. And I got the call to do Bent at the same time. And my agent said, well, one's an off-Broadway and one's Broadway. You're going to do the Broadway show. I said, no, I want to work with Joe Chaikin off-Broadway. Yeah, You're turning down the Broadway show? I said, yeah. They, They didn't believe it. They kept raising the price. And I said, no, I basically... I want to do this other thing. So they like my audition well enough to say, okay, you can do bent and then you can leave. Do the run of the short off-Broadway play with this guy and then come back. 
Yeah. So I did bend for two weeks, and my feeling, they said, we can come back now. And I said, yeah, I did it already. Wow. You know, I, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't want to come back to the Broadway show. I feel as if my work, you know, I did it. What, what am I going to do? Why six months? You know, why repeat yeah. myself? Yeah. I get it. So I, um, I've always felt that going back was like, what's the, what's the point? Mm-hmm. You know, if yeah. you've done something, move on. Try something new. Uh, challenge yourself in, in, in some new way. So, I love it. I love it. Even, so cool. Even when it means walking away from a, a Broadway show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, you, uh, we've, you're a, a wonderful guy. Thank you so much for Pleasure coming to, to uh, nice Genghis Khan, to, to our, our favorite Chinese restaurant. <laughs> and uh, uh, I think uh, everyone should definitely check out the film. Uh, it, again, it comes out uh, in April. It's April, out 18th April 18th. April 18th. Uh, uh, it's going to be debut date. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think Tremors people. Six on yeah. Tremors, Tremors six. Is yeah, coming. Tremors six. It's yet unnamed. It is the fifth sequel to the original Tremors. So I don't know what they're going to call it yet. It's for now. It's Tremors six. I love it. Mm-hmm. So last call at Murray's. Don't forget to check that out. And then uh, Michael, are you? Do you have any? So do you use any social media at all, or have a website? Yeah, I appreciate. Like that? I appreciate that. I have a Facebook page, which is really easy. Facebook.com slash actor Michael. Gross. Love it. Very easy to find. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Thank we'll you tag you out that. there. Of course. Come on. Uh, Mike Black, where can people find you on the internet? All over social media at Mike Black Attack. If you Ooh, like, if it. you like action figures, this guy's <laughs> yeah, Instagram. If you're real nerdy, yeah, it's a good place. He was to an action out. figure just walking in here today. He, he really, <laughs> he really is. Okay, yeah. yeah, I nearly killed myself on the speaker <laughs> on the way in. Hysterical. Uh, and Matt, where can people find you? Uh, you can find links to everything at funnymat.com. Or if you are not happy with my work on the show today, please let me know at mattwalkersucks.com. Yeah, and people do, Michael. People yeah, do. really do let him know. Real thing I have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, and you can always get me at Stephen Glickman, S T E P H E N Glickman, on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to the Nighttime Show podcast and leave comments and share it with your friends. Michael, it was an honor having you on. Enjoy you the pleasure. Fireball whiskey, and uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Thank you. Bye bye.